you ever wanted to travel with your kids but the thought of taking them on a long haul flight really just puts the dampener on it and you haven't taken the leap? In this video I'm going to give you my top tips on how to travel long haul with young kids. Hi guys, my name is Rochelle, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, you may not know that I'm a mum of two boys, a three year old and a one year old. I recently flew to the UK by myself with both of them. Uh, my husband joined us later, so um, he, we flew back all together. But anyway, I love to share my videos about family travel and adventure and also on our journey to minimalism and sustainability. But thanks for joining me. Right, so today I want to talk, like I said, about traveling with your kids on a long haul flight. I'm going to run through a few of my top tips on how to travel with your kids and what are the best things to do, some of the products you may want to take and some products that you can probably consider just leaving at home. So. The first thing I would say is to relax. Your kids, you're going to be on holiday, they're going to be on holiday, your kids are going to pick up on your vibe. So if you're stressed, if you're worried that they're going to have a meltdown, it's more than likely going to happen. What I do is I just think to myself, the worst that can happen is that I'm not going to get to sleep and I'm not going to get to watch any TV. All I have to do is make sure my kids are happy, comfortable, well fed, ready to sleep. Um, and you know, all of that good stuff. So the worst that can happen is they might have a meltdown. I mean, it's unlikely that that is going to happen though. And here is how to make sure that it doesn't happen. First of all, when you choose your flight times, don't assume that a night flight is the best time to be flying. What you wanna do is get to the airport well rested. You don't want your kids to get to the airport and already be tired because that's what leads to meltdowns. Mostly our kids have tantrums and things because they're tired. So what I would suggest you do is arrive at the airport with enough energy to check in. Don't forget you get to the airport and it's not until it's not it's probably like three hours once you're at the airport before you're actually on the plane and settled in. So make sure they've got enough energy to make it through that period of time. You don't want them napping in the airport. You don't want them having a nani at security or whatever. Um, so make sure you've got energy to get them through. Feed them at the airport yes definitely feed them at the airport fill up their drink bottles get them all you know excited take them for big walks let them run around and get all the crazy out when you get on the plane settle them in and let them know what's going to happen so that is where you want them to be getting tired when for when you take off so that they can have a nap once they're on the plane keeping in mind that the meal service will probably start around an hour to 90 minutes after you've gotten on the plane so if they're super tired they may sleep through that first meal service, in which case you might want to let the flight attendants know that they're asleep and not to heat up their meals. And, that, and that's why it's a good idea to feed them at the airport in case they sleep through that meal service. And I made the mistake of not telling the flight attendant that I um, that my kids were asleep and not, please don't heat the meal up, which meant that they he heated the meal up and they can only hold it for you for an hour. Otherwise it's past like their regulations for health and safety. So. Um, we missed out. What I did is instead I got them to save my meal and I ate the kids meals and later on I got my meal and that's what they ate. So and on that like Max absolutely loved like then the next meal like we had an 8 hour flight and then a 14 hour flight. The one that he was awake for he loved it. He loved getting his little tray of goodies and he just was in his element and in fact one of the times we went to the airport and he was like I don't want to eat now I want my, my cool food on the plane like Okay, that's fine, whatever. So that is one of my number one tips is to make sure that they're not tired before you go to the airport. Make sure that they've got the energy to make it onto the plane. The next thing to do is to travel early with them. You know, if you're flying regularly with them short hauls, then they're used to planes. So it's not this weird, unusual, cramped up situation that they've never experienced before. They're comfortable, it's a familiar environment. And then when a, someone's in a familiar environment, they're much less, they're much more relaxed. Um, so they're less likely to have a moment same as anybody, you know, like it's not an overwhelming situation to be in so get them used to flying early especially if you love traveling um, and Longer haul flights then become less and less of a hassle look if you pick the good airlines like we flew with Singapore Airlines And I'm not gonna lie. I felt like royalty I was only in economy, but I got to the gate and they saw me with my two boys on my own with my suitcases and stuff and next thing I know, there's like three staff helping me to my seat, helping me lift bags up and tucking people in, bringing me extra pillows, bringing me snacks, letting me know, you know, what the deal is, where the change room is and all of that stuff. Um, they came through on the flight, throughout the flight, just checking on the babies, chatting to them, making sure they're comfortable, bringing extra things. Like um, they filled up Lewis's bottle with milk for me. 
I mean, I'm breastfeeding him, but he still had, you know, it was nice that they did that um, and other things. So, and then they helped me off the plane. Um, they bought me kids' headphones. They bought me activity packs, all of that good stuff. It was awesome. When it comes to screen time, I know like we're all trying to reduce our kids' reliance on screen time, but let me tell you, long haul flights are not the time to get funny about that. Plan that your children, even if they don't sleep, they can just watch movies the whole time, watch shows, whatever they wanna watch, just let them go for it. But then also kind of explain to them what's going to happen. Like even th even my three-year-old, I said to him, you know, we've got this flight, we're gonna have dinner, you can watch the movies, and then you might need to have a little sleep because when we get to the airport, we're gonna to have to get up and we'll be at the airport for a few hours and it's gonna be the middle of the night. So then we're gonna get on another plane so you need to have a bit of a sleep now so you're not too tired when we get to the airport so we can have a little look around. And he he was agreeable with that. Like he got to a point where he's pretty tired and was happy to lay down and have a little nap. He was, they were both asleep when we landed. They both woke up and perked up and the excitement of being in a new place like got them energized. So we let them, so I let them run around, um, wore off some energy, have a little snack, go to the toilet, get their, actually this was a good tip, pack your kids pajamas on the plane. So when we got to the airport waiting for our second flight, I went, we went into a change room, we got their jammies on, we got them all ready as if like, okay, we're going to get on the plane and it's going to be bedtime. And that was like, that was ideal because like, it's still part of their routine. So stick to some of those routines, you know, like if they have a special bottle, take the special bottle with you, take their, I don't know, their favorite pillow or whatever it is that if you can fit it in your bag, take a few things so that you can stick to your nighttime bedtime routine. Their favorite books, so you can read the book on the plane and tuck them in with the blanket and the pillow that they provide. So things that you will definitely need on the plane. Take their drink bottle, empty of course, so you can fill it up. Take some snacks. Yes, they provide food. Yes, you can get food at the airport, but take a few snacks that feel familiar. Pack their PJs, pack spare nappies and um, spare clothes for both, for all your kids. Max is in, only in nappies at night time, but obviously, so obviously I packed some nappies for him to, to wear for when he was asleep. So I basically just let him stay in nappies the whole time, even though we were up and down going to the toilet. Um, but still pack, yeah, pack nappies and clothes. And don't forget a spare change of clothes for you in case there's a spew accident or a drink spill. It's very easy to happen. So take some spare clothes for you as well. And the baby carrier. If you're one of, if any of your children are small enough to be in a baby carrier, I highly recommend it because then you've got two free hands if someone wants to be carried. Also, you can pack the kids' headphones if you've got them, but it's not necessary. They do provide kids' headphones, you know, like over the ear ones on most flights again depending on the airline you pick if you pick a budget one they may not you've got the screens so a few games and toys maybe a favorite toy or a vehicle or whatever a sticker book or something you actually don't need too many activities there's that much going on between meal services and naps and watching movies and just getting up and walking around and all that maybe two or three different activities is about all that you need. So for two optional items, I have a carry-on stroller. You can use it in the airport and take it on the plane with you. Um, and then you've got a, pl uh, a stroller for while you're over there. Now the downside of those is like, if, you, if you've got like a bigger kid like Max, who the pram was actually for because I had Lewis in the carrier, um, it doesn't have suspension. So going over cobbled streets in Europe, it was a little bit bumpy and a little bit awkward at times. And we probably could have gotten away without it. We didn't really need to take it, especially because we had the carrier and Lewis could easily go in the carrier. And when you're on public transport and stuff, sometimes we just left it at home. So we didn't really need to take it. I'll leave it up to you. Depends on how much your kids are willing to walk. The other thing is one of these flight comfort pillows. Let me show you what I mean. Um, it's a blow up thing. It goes in the seat well and creates like a bed for your um, for your seat. And this actually worked really well. Um, I did take it. The downside is it takes up quite a bit of space in your carry on. It takes up like in a normal size, full size carry on. It takes up probably half, a third to a half of your suitcase. Wouldn't recommend this for flights less than five hours, eight hours at a minimum. Um, because you're not allowed to have it blown up in when the seatbelt signs on and it can only go either in the window seat or in the middle of the middle aisle if there's a three if it's like a three aisle one you know what I mean which is a downside because like if you're the adult and you've got your kid on the middle you don't really have the window seat to lean on um, but Max fit into the seat he was able to lay down and tuck his legs up and then I was able to lay down across two seats with my legs up on it as well and then I was cuddling Lewis so we were all able to lay down using this device 
So I do recommend it, but it, again, it's it is a compromise with space. Um, let me show you. Okay, so here's my chosen device. It's Cushy Kit. It comes in this bag. So as like as you can see, it's kind of like um, a bit chunky. It's not too bad, but it comes with a pump. Yes, a pump. And then this is the uh, this is the item. So basically, it's got these two. So you have to take the pump with you. I wouldn't really recommend not getting the pump. Um, you put the device in the seat well and then pump it up while it's there because it's designed to like kind of like squash in. Um, and yeah, anyway, so I recommend you blow it up a couple of times and practice with it before you get on the plane. So it's got these, um, this like, you know, cl closer. It's got one that goes like that in there and then a, a proper closer. So what happens is you blow it up with the black piece in your, and you can blow it up that way. There like that and you blow it up. And then when you want to quickly empty it, you pull the whole thing out because it lets the air out really fast. So that's the, that's the one way air valve. So, okay, here we go. <laughs> this is going to be funny. So you set it up in the, in the plane and yes, check out my lovely uh, slippers by the way. Ding, 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 ding. Right. So you put it in place. And then you get you get going with it. So keeping in mind that when you're on the plane, no one's going to hear you pumping it because of the noise of the airplane. Okay, so that's that. So this is the cushion when it's all blown up. So it's got a soft bit. So it's got two sides, soft bit on that side as well. So this is for, I guess, like extra, like budget airlines where you've got less leg room, but this is the normal, the normal side. Um, and then this fills up the whole seat well. So I, so what happens is um, the edge of your seat is here and the back of the seat in front goes here and you kind of like got this flat surface. Um, yeah, so you wouldn't believe how much how good it is. Like Max got about five hours sleep, I, I think roughly on it with his head on the seat and he was like laid and curled up. And then I actually had my feet um, on like across here um, and I was able to lay down with my head on, head down and then my body across the two seats, Lewis tucked up, kind of cuddling him like this and holding him in. And then I had my feet up on this cushion as well. So um, it is something to consider. It's not necessary. And like I said, if you're going like to from Australia to Europe and you've got two over eight hour flights, it's probably a good idea. Um, check with your airline as well. Um, even though Singapore says that they will allow you, I still ask the flight attendant before I blew it up, is it okay if I set this thing up? And I think they really appreciate that, you know, letting them know. You don't want to, it's like one of those things like, what is worse? Do I want to get on the plane and go, man, I wish I had it with me? Um, Cushy, um, Cushy Kids is an, is an Australian brand. Um, yeah, they're really good, um, really easy. I got it on Black Friday sales for like 30% off. So keep checking back. Um, this is it, Cushy Kids. I'll leave it linked down below. So those are some of my tips for flying long haul with kids. Hopefully it's inspired you to maybe consider if you've been holding off on that long haul flight because you're not really sure if you want to take your kids on a plane. Um, don't let it stop you because it can be done. And I, I would say that it's rarely as bad as what you think it's going to be. Anyway, don't let it stop you from going on those adventures because honestly, family travel and family holidays and you, your kids having time where you're relaxed and they're relaxed and you're all together making memories it's totally invaluable and totally worth it. Um, if you want more tips on packing and hacking and traveling and all of that good stuff please stick around it has been my pleasure thanks for joining me i'll see you next time bye